it's heartbreaking because we've all been going to this ground since we were kids. I was took here when I was five, so it's a lot of years invested in this club, a lot of emotions invested in the club. It's our club, our community. Um, it's just been taken from us and we've been mocked and ridiculed in the process. Blackburn Rovers, Carlton Athletic, Brighton Road Albion, Blackpool Football Club all stand together today in one voice and say we've had enough, we will not take it anymore, you need to change and you need to get rid of these owners, thank you. Famously we got into the Premier League in 2010 and that brought with it um, approximately £140 million which came into the club and which we believed would set the club up for the future. Sadly, this is not the case. All the money that came in has been diverted largely into other Oyston businesses, hasn't been put into the football club, and, and people have just had enough of it. The Oystons have basically utilised the funds for their other non-football related businesses, or certainly the majority of the funds. Um, and this is what we as fans believe is completely unacceptable. Most true supporters would think it's perfectly reasonable for somebody who owns a business to make you know, a, a sensible profit out of it. Um, but they have to remember that they are guardians of something that's, that's more than just a business. Well, I think Owen uh, sees himself in a rather delusional way, sort of a saviour of the club, that he's pumped an awful lot of his own private money into the club. But outside of their small coterie, I don't think anybody thinks the good business people are successful really. I think it's probably an object lesson in how not to run a football club. The majority shareholder of the club is Owen Oyston and his uh, son Carl took over as chairman of the club in the late 90s. It seems very much that Owen owns the club but Carl decides very much what goes on. Uh, people don't feel like the club are putting football first or this club first, they feel like they are using money for their own benefit and not for the football club. We won't accept it and that's why fans are boycotting in significant numbers. Carl Oyston said in 2015, judge me at the end of the season, judge me in May and, and that was the year we got relegated from the championship so we did. Uh, we had a mass march through town that was judgment day one. Yeah, well, personally, I'm not going to any home games, along with thousands, thousands more. We once had full stadium, which all 17,000, probably averaging about 15, but now it's down to one to 2,000. Well, we call it an ethical boycott, where people can make their own decisions in terms of whether or not they go and support the club. But we are pretty strident about the fact that if you go through the gates of the club, you're putting money towards the Oyster regime, and that's funding litigation against fellow supporters. I'll go to away games, I'll go to anywhere else. But until there's every Oyster involvement has gone out of this football club, I won't be back in that ground. It's absolutely horrible to feel that you have no alternative other than to boycott your own club. It's, it's, it hurts, quite frankly. Um, and I think anybody who's a football fan will understand that. But for the future of our club, we feel that that's what we've got to do. We, we're going to have to start from the revenue um, to encourage them to leave. Basically up to 90% of the fan base have decided not to go. The majority of that was on the back of people being sued, that was a final straw. The owners have um, started legal action against various fans who have spoken out against them. Um, and this really represents a line crossed for most fans. This fondness for litigation that they have, whereby I think they've been to court on 97 occasions with actions. I must admit, Carl seems to sort of revel in it and enjoy it a great deal. We hope that the owners will get the message and they will go. Uh, partly depends on what happens in the big court case that's coming up this summer with that 20% uh, shareholder, Valeri Bellicott. It's a very significant day when a minor shareholder is having to take legal action um, to get what he believes is, is uh, rightfully his, um, a return on his investments. We hope for a buyer to the club. We feel they are out there and people are willing to invest. We would like people to invest with the, with the thought process that the supporters trust would have some say or some position on that board so that they could put the fans point of view across. There's a lot of good fans out here, a lot of good people. 
it would help them massively because you've got a whole community to bring back together to this club and there's no one better to do it than the Blackpool Supporters Trust. I think we've got to the stage really that the only outcome is that the, the Oysters have to sell the club, they have to move on because there are so many Blackpool fans now who have said a line's been crossed and I will not return to Bloomfield Road until we have new owners. We can't progress as a club if, if uh, a big chunk of our fan base is missing. Football without fans is nothing. So we really need them to go. It, it is that serious and they need to understand that.